Hey there, it's your Wisconsin wine guy. It's a new year and new wines, and I want to thank you again for joining me on this journey of wine reviews. Now, again, for those who are new to this channel, I'm your Wisconsin wine guy. And <laughs> these are the wines that you can find on the shelves of your everyday liquor store, grocery store, and some wine shop shelves. I get these wines, give them a taste, and give you my opinion using the infamous thumb rating system. And it goes something like this. Thumbs up means that I recommend that wine. Give it a try. I'm enjoying it. And I'm going to tell you why I enjoy it. Three quarters, you know, I had this wine at a party. Or if I'm having this wine at a party and I'm digging it, I'm just like falling in love with it. I would get a few bottles and bring it home to my friends and would advise you to do the same. Or some wines that, you know what, I can dig it at a party, but I won't bring home, right? This is like finding a date. <laughs> so halfway, uh, you know, not so much for me. Something about that wine just didn't work with my palate. You know, not to say it's a bad wine, but it just didn't work for my palate. And I'll explain to you why it didn't work for my palate. Thumbs down, well, that's an easy one. Get that wine out of here. And then every now and then, stars, 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 the double thumbs up will come out. And those are wines that I feel uh, when tasting them is just an exception. You know, I can taste the past, I can taste the present, I can taste the future if I'm gonna sit on that wine and age. You know, so those wines, and it's very rare that it happens that a wine will get a double thumbs up from me. So let's get to this year's wine review and start off right. So. We're going to talk about a region uh, that's in the shadow of another region. Now, we all know Burgundy, right? Pinot Noir, uh, Chardonnays, you know, we, we know those, right? But in the southernmost part of Burgundy, there's a little appellation or area called Beaujolais in which people tend to overlook. And most of us know Beaujolais by the Beaujolais Nouveau that happens, the release that happens every November, every Thanksgiving, right? We all know that, you know, but let me tell you that there's a lot of good wines in this area and a lot of good value for wines in this area because it's in the shadow of Burgundy, all right? So that's what I'm bringing to you today. So let's break it down for you. In Beaujolais, there's the Beaujolais, I mean, these are wines that are made without any rules and regulations, you know, but still made from grapes and can be a blend of grapes, you know, from in and around the area. Then you have Beaujolais Village, in which they have, you know, certain levels of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, guidelines or instructions or structures in making those wines. And then you have what's called the Cru, a small section. These are the, the best growing areas in Beaujolais. And there's only 10, 10 crews, all right? at good value. So what I'm gonna to bring to you today, look that up, Beaujolais and the Cruz. I'm gonna to bring to you one of the crew areas in Beaujolais, the Morgan. So we're gonna be tasting two wines by Jean-Claude Debon, all right, Beaujolais. The first one's gonna be a 2017 uh, Morgan Beaujolais. And the second one is going to also be a Morgan Beaujolais, but 2018. Okay, Montrachet and Belle Grise. But the most important thing on here is the Morgan, the Morgan uh, area or crew area in Beaujolais. Now, the grapes in that area, I get these poor. The grapes in the area of Beaujolais will be Gamay, 100% Gamay. The only grape, just like you have all of Pinot Noir and Burgundy. This is gonna be all Gamay. I mean, look at that color. I mean, it's not like some of the typical, like the Bougelet Nouveau, you know, you get that Bougelet Nouveau and it's kind of like reddish. This, you know, has depth to it between the, the two wines. I mean, in fact, the 2018 even seems a little darker. I have my white background here. Let's see if we can get a look at that in the picture for you. So look at this. So here is the 2017. Here is the 2018. Now, I can definitely see it on my end. The 2018 is like deep, you know, deep color. It's a nice color in 2017, but the color in the 18 is, is very deep and rich, just on the color. So get a look at that. I mean, you can, you can kind of see it in the, in the camera, in the video, right? So give this a, both of these a swirl and a sniff. Ah, I mean, just, just fresh berries on each of those. Ooh, but then the the uh, 2018 comes with a little extra. I mean, there's a little extra depth there. 
you know, between the two. Wow, but they're both nice. So dark berry, spice, clean, fresh, subtle red notes, red fruits in the, in the, in the, in the background. Mm, nice, but when you go over here, I mean, just so much richness. I mean, wow, <laughs> on the 2018. Wow, so that, there's the nose taste. But do you know me? The most important thing here is acidity. Two step process always do. First step is going to be the rinse. I'm rinsing for the acidity. Second step is going to be for the taste. I'm going to do both of these, you know, and I'll give you my opinion, my review of the wines after tasting them both. All right, 2017, the going to be the 2017 Morgan Montrachet. Got much to see. Mm, wow, nice acidity, soft tannins, has a, a subtle elegance to it. I mean, if you like Pinot Noirs, I implore you to check into the Gamay's of Beaujolais. I mean, this is like one of those very nice, easy drinking gamets, but nice flavor profile, nice acidity. Mm, wow. Now for the 2018 rinse. Wow. Again, nice acidity. A little more tannins than this. This is soft to medium tannins. Boy, it makes my mouth water. Definitely, there's, a, there's more of a depth of a flavor here in the 2018. Wow, but they're both good. Acidity is nice on both of these. I enjoy that, which to me says it's going to be a good food wine, right? Good wine, good food uh, wine with uh, lighter dishes, lighter flavored dishes, uh, subtle spice dishes, not heat spice, but just flavorful spice dishes. Wow, of course, cheeses, you know, light pâtés and such wow very nice now for the taste oh my that just goes down so well i mean again the difference between these two from the same region which is so remarkable you have one that is obviously, it seems as though it has been uh, aged in a different type of barrel. Whereas you really get very little to no, and probably no barrel aging here. Just, just a nice little elegance. But definitely, you pick up some richness and depth and subtle smokiness here on the 2018. All right, taste. Wow. From the same area and so different, these two wines. I mean, it's like 2017 would be a good wine just to enjoy every day. You know, it would be a, a good wine to have what, you know, just sitting out. You know, you can even like, give this like slight coolness to it, you know, and just sitting out on the deck, you know, and enjoying this nice and light red wine. But then wine number two, 2018, you know, Throw out the steaks, you know, put the steaks on, I put the burgers on, you know, I mean, so we could go steak and we could go burgers here, right? You know, but again, a, a wine with nice depth to it, nice flavor, nice structure. They both have good structure, you know, but they're two completely different wines. So if you want a wine with depth and complexity, the 2018 from the uh, Belle Grise, I, I think will just do you just right, you know, but then the Mantra C, you know, again, elegance. I've always been a fan of the Beaujolais wines, but we'll come back to that. So here's where we are. The 2017 Montrecy, Cru, Morgan, Beaujolais, Wisconsin wine guy, give this a double thumbs up. I mean, each time I take a sip, there's more and more flavor in the finish that comes along, but still maintains its elegance. 
Wow, double thumbs up for the 2018. Mm, double thumbs up. I mean, I like the structure. I like the tannins. I like the depth that exists in 2018. I mean, they're both just so lovely, so different from the same area. So lovely, you know. If you're a Pinot Noir drink, as I said earlier, skip over to Beaujolais and try the Gamay's. Oh, and also, you know, you'll find some Chardonnays in that area as well, right? Okay, so this is your Wisconsin wine guy. Send you as always. Let your palate be the guide when selecting your wines. And it's 2022. New wines, new reviews, and there you go. See you next time. Ciao.